creativity, the ability to transcend traditional ideas through the use of imagination. Since the beginning of recorded history, creative works have stirred the soul and inspired the masses. What is this magical mystery? How do we turn that initial spark into something tangible? How can we apply it in our own lives? Join me as we attempt to answer these and other questions as we delve inside the creative spirit. Roberta Freeman is a vocalist extraordinaire with a very broad range. She has toured, recorded, and performed with everyone from Guns N' Roses to Engelbert Humperdinck to the Bee Gees to Lou Reed. Roberta continues to tour and do session work in LA where she currently resides. Please welcome to the show, Roberta Freeman. Hi, Roberta, thanks for joining me. Oh, thank you for inviting me, Vicki, it's a pleasure. Okay. With everybody, we always start out with some of your early childhood memories. Now, I know that your sister's an artist, and talk a little bit about your upbringing. Did you come from a creative household? Yes. Um, uh, both of my parents sang. Uh, my mother loved to sing opera. Around the, they weren't uh, professional, either one of them, but my mother did love to sing opera around the house, and my father loved the blues and had an extensive uh, collection of, you know, Satchmo and Dinah Washington, Billie Holiday. So um, I was I was greatly influenced at a very young age. Um, I was influenced by the blues, by uh, opera, and also folk music because my mother uh, really loved folk and listened to a lot of pizza. <laughs> and, um, uh, what's her name? Joni Mitchell? I don't know. <laughs> Joan, Joan Baez. Joan Baez. Okay. Yeah, so we, we listened to a lot of that. And um, and then once I became a little older, because my sister's six years older than me, when uh, she started high school, she really started listening a lot to bands like Led Zeppelin and and David Bowie. And so she, she turned me on to uh, the rock part of it. There was a lot of music. In, in around my home. So uh, from a very young age, I was singing and, and I loved music. Cool, so did you always know that you were gonna be a musician or a vocalist uh, your whole life? Or was there, when did you really realize that that was gonna be your calling or your profession? Uh, there was no doubt in my mind. Um, from as early as I could remember, I, I always wanted to be a singer and I always knew I was gonna be a singer. So you know, I was there in front of the mirror with a hairbrush, practicing, singing along to records, and yeah, it was there was never a doubt in my mind. So, uh, did you have any formal training, or was it are you self taught, or talk a little bit about your education as far as music and your background? Okay, well, um, I had a lot of vocal training. Um, I. You know, I, I dabbled here and there in, in schools. Uh, I went to HB uh, Studios in, in Manhattan, um, but I did have a lot of a lot of um, private training uh, with some teachers, and um, you know that was extremely useful. And uh, I took some theory. Uh, I don't really read, um, but I'm working on it. I'm work, still working, work in progress. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean. A lot of it is, I, I do a lot with my ear um, because I don't really read. Um, everything is, is done by ear. I listen to something, I learn it, that's it, it's done. You know, so um, yeah, it's, it's I guess, self-taught mostly as far as the music, you know, technical part of it is concerned. So I assume like you probably, like most of us were in like cover bands in high school and uh, what, what was like some of your early, uh, like really playing out with bands and live music away from like school productions and moving into the rock genre? Okay, um, well, uh, immediately after I graduated high school, I started answering ads um, and uh, I, I tried out for a band that wanted a male singer for a heavy metal band. Uh, singing things like Judas Priest, you know that kind of that kind of genre, 
and um, I answered the ad and I went down to the audition and they took one look at me and they were like, what are you doing here? You're a chick, you know? And I said, I could sing all this stuff way better than any of those guys. And uh, I kind of, you know, fought my way into the audition and they finally let me sing and I, I got hired on the spot. And that was, you know, my first experience um, outside of high school. And after that, you know, I just, I started going to jam sessions and, you know, meeting with people and, and singing background uh, in little little bands around Manhattan and, you know, singing in clubs like the China Club and Nirvana and just kind of, you know, people, you know, getting to know people and uh, getting people to know me. And eventually I was, I was, I landed my first gig, which was big, you know, so, uh, from there, it kind of snowballed. What was the first gig? Everybody's dying to know, I'm sure. <laughs> the first, I mean, my first really, really big gig was Pink Floyd. Oh, no kidding. Wow. Yeah. I saw you did that uh, Lou Reed uh, at the Grammys that, at Radio City Music Hall. That was way back in the day, too. What, what year was that, or do you recall? Or I don't know what year that was. Like, I can't remember that far back. <laughs> It was a while ago. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what's uh, like uh, doing the backup vocals? How do you have any freedom? Especially like, let's start with just the studio. Like do, when you're in the studio, do they just say, go ahead and sing, do what you want to do? Or are there set charts there? And how does that process usually work? When you walk into the studio, you really never know what to expect. Um, it could be, okay, here are the parts. We have everything written out. This is it. You know, we want, you know, these harmonies on this part. And, you know, exact, it's exactly like charted out for you. And then sometimes the artist doesn't know what he wants. And they say, do whatever you think sounds good. You know, make up a part. Or they'll have like a loose part and you can elaborate on that. And, um... It, you just you really never know and sometimes it's you know somewhere in between there you know but um mostly you know there's always a point where they, they let you wail you know they, they want you to do some ad-libbing and on certain certain parts of songs um there's always you know i never i never did a session where i wasn't allowed to you know to, to just wail you know so that's, well, how, what about when you go to play live now? They, they, so the vocals are laid down on a, and you're probably not always the same vocalist who sang on their record, I'm assuming, right. too. So, and it, are you allowed to stray from the part, the record, the original recording, and do a live version, or how does that work out? Well, again, it depends on the artist, and you know, it depends on the kind of show it is. Um, sometimes the artist wants it exactly like the record; they don't want any deviation. Um, you know, your parts are precise and they don't want anything. Some artists will give you a solo and they will tell you exactly what to sing for the solo, note for note. And that doesn't, you know, it's like, okay, I get to showcase my voice, but I don't get to showcase any kind of creativity at all. So these aren't my licks. So I don't really feel like it's my work. You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. that, that's uh, not a very satisfying feeling, you know, uh, but that doesn't happen that much um, when usually when you're given a, a moment to shine and there's uh, most of the, of the artists that I've worked for give you a little moment um, when you're free to do whatever you want to do. Um, and a lot of times um, with the artists that I've worked for, I've gotten a lot of uh, creative freedom um, like with Guns N' Roses, like one of my first gigs, um, I was, I had no idea what I wanted, what I was, what was expected of me. I, I came into the gig and there were no backgrounds on any of the uh, recordings. There were just some guys singing some backgrounds on some of the songs and Axel basically told me, I don't know what, what to do, so why don't you just make it up, and, and I'm sure it'll sound great. And that's what I did. So I, I, I uh, arranged all the vocal backgrounds, and, you know, they liked it. So 
you know, sometimes it's, it's very satisfying to be able to have that much freedom to do whatever you want. Yeah, I know that you do do some writing and you've got, you've got some projects coming up where you are featured as a vocalist. Describe a little bit about the writing. You, uh, you write the lyrics first or how do you go about that when you're writing music? Um, well, um, I write usually when I'm going through something personal, like something, you know, tumultuous in my life or something that's really, you know, just upsetting. Um, I write my best when I'm sad, <laughs> when bad things are happening, because I'm very influenced by the blues, you know. I'm not going to write a happy song about rainbows and unicorns, you know. So I just can't, that's just not in me. <laughs> um, but I do feed off of what is what I'm experiencing at the time. And sometimes it's crazy, but sometimes I will dream complete songs and it's weird because you know most of the time when you know you're awake you'll think of lyrics or a tune will hit you but when i'm asleep and i dream of a song it's usually a complete song it has the bridge chorus hook you know music melody lyrics everything everything and it's it's bizarre and that's that's when i just you know force myself to wake up and, and record it immediately you know? Yeah, I don't find it bizarre or crazy at all. <laughs> that's, just, that's totally it. You know, you're you're connecting with, I even said in the one video that I did, I think it's broadcasting from the universe and all of us are hearing it, but some of us can maybe hear it more than others. But what do you record? Do you have, like use your phone or something and just grab your phone and record it? How do you do that? Yeah, I just, I grab my phone. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I know you've played some really big shows on some of these tours. So what was the biggest uh, audience that you've ever played in front of? The biggest audience uh, was Wembley, Wembley Stadium. That was 100,000 people. And I had been playing stadiums that were quite large, but Wembley was hands down the biggest. And not only was it the biggest audience, but it was the biggest show um one of the biggest shows that i've done uh it was it was a tribute to freddie mercury so everybody from elton john to elizabeth taylor were there and everybody performed and it was a major major deal i just got to hang out with like my idols all day long it was an ongoing it was all day long you know act after act so it was it blew me away. It really blew yeah, I remember there. I watched that concert on uh, maybe MTV. I watched it on TV. I remember because I was also a big Queen fan and I loved Freddie Mercury. Yeah, that was a great show. Um, describe for people who have never experienced it. I've experienced nowhere near that big a scale. But when you're on stage and that energy from the audience just hits you, like what is that like? And the feeding off of the audience and the energy that goes on between the performers and the audience. Talk a little bit about that. Well, um, you know, there's always an energy and um, I just, it's, I mean, sometimes you have an energy like, oh my God, like the energy is really low and people are just not responding and it's kind of a dead room, you know, and that's when it's your responsibility to bring them up to, you know, the level of excitement you need them to be at. And, you know, because it could be a drag to play for a dead room. And so you, you want you want to have fun and you want to know that they're having fun. So, you, you know, you, you try to, to get them out, to pull them out of that. And if it's if it, the energy is high and, and the minute you walk on stage, people are going crazy, you know it's going to be an amazing show because you're having fun with them. And, you know, it's you always feed off of the energy whether if, if it's negative or positive you, you're going to feed off of the energy and and you're going your responsibility is to have everybody leave feeling completely satisfied and knowing that they had a great time well that's a great uh, goal to shoot for <laughs> yeah. um, have you ever had an experience where you on stage or in any phase of the creative process where you knew that something really transcendent or magical had happened um, yeah, when I was, you know, this isn't really like, well, it was, it was pretty magical. I was, um, we were on stage, um, I was on stage with GNR and the November Rain video had just been released. Uh, and 
it, we would we were doing an uh, outdoor concert. It was in the stadium. I can't even remember where it was, but um, the minute we had been doing the whole show, and it was a long show, uh, and when we sang, when we, we performed November Rain, it started to rain, and it was just like, I don't know, the gods just came down on it. It was, it was a real magical moment. It was just, it was like a moment out of a movie. It really was. Everybody was looking at each other, all excited on stage, and, and sometimes that's really cool because, you know, when you play so many shows every single day, it's, you know, it's, like whatever man you know we're on stage and we're playing and it's really it's really special when something happens where everybody turns into like a little kid on stage and you could see it in their eyes and everybody's smiling and it's it's really that's magical so that was that was a pretty magical moment wow it's like the heavens parted you know <laughs> or something yeah. um, what would, what advice would you give to somebody if they were trying to follow in your footsteps and they wanted to be a professional background vocalist? What what advice would you give to somebody who's up and coming? Well, um, you know, first of all, if if you want to be a singer, uh, I'm I'm not going to advise anybody who's going to do anything else but that. But um, if you want to be a singer, I would say the number one thing is to take care of your instrument, uh, and that's not just your voice; mm -hmm. it's your whole body. Uh, you have to get, you know, the basics, plenty of water and sleep, number one, sleep. Uh, you have to eat right and you have to kind of steer clear of alcohol. Um, you know, you just really have to take care of your body because, you know, you can't, you're not, you know, a guitar player can, can do a gig with strep throat. You're going to struggle through it, you know. So, you know, you, you just, that's the number one thing. And also, you know, when you're, when you are touring, and and or going into the studio or whatever you know the night before you need to get that rest and you need to have discipline to do that um you need to uh, be diligent about it and you know it's an ongoing thing it's not just like oh, i'm getting ready for the big gig you know i'm going to be good the night before and get some sleep it's a constant thing you have to be the, the first one going back to that hotel and hitting the bed you know so uh, the guys might think you know, you're a bit dull, but that's okay because you're going to perform and, and that's what you're hired to do. So you, you can't ever forget that. Right. It's more than just having talent. There's discipline that goes along with it. Absolutely. Yeah. Like, you know, I mean, if you're, it's, you know, I don't even try to speak on days that I'm, that I'm performing. You know, you, you need vocal rest and, and, but then again, you have to sing every single day without fail. You Days that you're not working, you need to do at least warm ups. You know, uh, you have to sing every single day. That's a really important thing. Right. So, no speaking, but singing. <laughs> <laughs> do you think that is creativity? Can creativity be taught, or is it just something that comes within us? Or what's your take on that? Wow. I think uh, a talent can be worked upon, but. As far as being creative, that's something that comes from within you. No, I don't think that could be taught at all. Yeah. Um, where do you think it comes from, this creative energy that we're all immersed in? Where, do you have any thoughts on that? Where does it come from? Well, it depends. I mean, I've seen, you know, I've seen talented people, and I've been impressed with that. But then, like, when you come across somebody who's an absolute genius, it's like a divine thing, you know, it, it really is something that it makes me believe in God, you know, it just, it just, it's just something that's just so beyond anything that's taught any schooling whatsoever. You know, I've, I've run across people who are just like so incredibly talented, just anything they just touch. It's like the golden, you know, so it's it's way beyond uh, anything that's taught or learned or you know or studied. It's just it's divine. Well, that's a good answer. I like that. Uh, what it, so you mentioned early on that you did come from a creative family and you were exposed to all sorts of music. So, what inspires you then and now, and how has it changed over time? And is there anybody that you're just really loving right now? 
you know, I don't think it's really, you know, the artists that I followed have, have changed, but I don't think when I hear something that really moves me, and it's not just like, oh, this is a nice ditty playing on the radio. It's it's when something just really, really hits me and strikes a core deep in my soul uh, to the point where I move to like, tears or goosebumps or whatever, that's, that's never changed. I, I've always, always reacted to certain songs like that since I was a little girl and um, it still happens now. Um, you know, I mean, there's, there's, I could listen to an old Billy Holiday song and get that, you know, oh, okay. yeah. or something, you know, and I can, you know, uh, you know, Adele, you know, she has an amazing voice. I've been listening to a lot of her lately and, and she's so young and she's one of those, those people who are just, they have it, you know, mm-hmm. and, um, you know, some of her lyrics are just blow my mind you know very simple but really strike a deep chord you know so it 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 hasn't changed it hasn't changed you know no matter who the artists are now or then it the feeling is always there you know uh do you think that um it's based on talent as far as the business or is it like um especially is there a double standard that women have to be cute or attractive and the men can be whatever, you know, have you encountered any of that? Or do you want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, that's absolutely true. A guy could come to an audition, you know, looking like a complete bomb and maybe even smelling a little bit, (laughs) you know, and he'll get the gig, you know, but the women have to really, be on mark, you know, everything has to be perfect down to the fingernails, you know, it's ridiculous. They, they check you out every single detail. And, um, you know, I mean, there there have been circumstances where I've worked with women who are either like, you know, overweight or not that pretty and, and they're really talented and, and thank God they were chosen because of their talent. But, um, there's there's so many so many times where I've worked with girls who were unfortunately not that talented, but they were gorgeous and that's they played. I bet they played a mean tambourine though, right? Um, <laughs> that's just a joke because a lot of times the guys' girlfriends would be real pretty and they'd just be standing on the side playing a tambourine. That's like a yeah. it's a private joke for me but yeah, you mentioned that there, a lot of times there are the, some of the same girls is there are there groups of girls that you've worked with time and time again that you may have a good rapport with or that you you feel like your voice really blends with well absolutely absolutely yeah there's there's a, a little circle of women that i work with a lot and um you know really talented women and we have a great blend and and we've worked time and time with each other yeah Okay, Roberta, I know you have a studio session later today, so tell everybody how to get a hold of you or what's coming up in your future. What, are you touring anytime soon or how, if they want to find out more about you, where they can reach you and give okay. everybody a little background info. All right. Well, I'm on my way to a, a, a session to do a, a new Nick Waterhouse um, recording, so look out for that really soon. Um, I think we'll you know, probably be finishing up very soon. Um, I'm working on my own stuff, so I don't know when that's going to be released, but I am working on that. And uh, I've been also touring with this band called Brit Floyd, and I am used for the American bits because they're a UK-based band. So I usually do, you know, spring and summer uh, with them. So look out for Brit Floyd. And um, you could always reach me at robertafreeman.com. That's my website. And you could uh, send me an email uh, for a booking or whatever. So that's how you can reach me. Okay, well, it was really great speaking with you uh, today. Uh, it was very informative, and I hope everybody enjoys it. So thanks so much again for joining me. It was a pleasure talking with you. Oh, thank you so much, Vicki. It was my pleasure. It really was. Thank you. Okay, bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>